Hello and welcome back to Coding with Carl. This is episode 19 of the Zero to Android series, the show where we take a cup of tea and a smile and we deal with Android and Java in a very gentlemanly and English fashion. Now, when we started the stream, I had no experience with Java or Android development whatsoever. Uh, I had you know, nearly 20 years of programming experience under my belt, but I'd always avoided Java uh, because I, I was suspicious of it because it was created by people who love object-oriented programming and also it was created initially I believe um, as a kind of unified software platform for refrigerators which is never really you know that it doesn't really turn me on the idea of, uh, of that so you know, fast forward 20 odd years and now we have Android, which is the dominant mobile platform of the day, I guess. And it, everything runs on Java and the Java stack. And I uh, decided that seeing as I use Android and I quite like it, it'd be nice if I knew how to develop Android apps. Uh, because there's a few things that are conspicuously lacking from my mobile experience that I think would help me uh, to be more productive day to day. So that was the idea behind the stream. And the idea of doing it all on stream was that I would be able to show people, uh, developers and non-developers, uh, you know, that you don't really need a formal education, uh, tons of books, or to study for, for several hundred hours to make something. You just jump in, get your hands dirty, and get going with it. And that's what we've done. In 18 hours, we have built a very simple Android application and where we left off yesterday, we had turned this planner view here into what we call a fragment. And what I would like to do in this episode is make it so that you can swipe from through days, basically. So we'll have this same fragment reused over and over. And as you swipe through, it will progress through the days. If you have missed any of the previous episodes of the stream or you're joining uh, late at any point, every episode I, I do my best to get it uploaded to YouTube more or less straight away, uh, definitely within 12 hours. And this is my YouTube channel, Coding with Carl. Feel free to subscribe, um, you know, check out the back episodes and uh, leave me a like if you are feeling generous. And as always, I recommend watching these videos at times two speed because things can get a bit slow from time to time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cool watching someone program at double speed, to be honest. Okay, so let's have a look at our to-do list for today. Uh, swipe to select day. This is the, the hot topic of the week. So we've turned our planet into a fragment view now, which means we should be able to use view pages to navigate between days. Refactor things. Anything called today is misnamed now. I always like to start the show by refactoring things uh, because it's like general housekeeping, isn't it? So let's do that first. So there is no more notion or there's, there's no activity for today. The today activity is now going to be planner, basically. So let's uh, let's refactor things. What have we got that says today in it? This one here, today activity, that's going to be renamed, refactor and rename to planner activity. And hopefully, this wonderful piece of software, I say wonderful in inverted commas, um, refactoring is not available until indices are ready. Okay, can I do it now? Has it done it? No, it hasn't. Let's, uh, let's try again. Refactor, rename, planner activity, refactor. Okay, what is this? Like, I've never had this, this preview in the past. So it's gonna update a few things there. It's gonna update a few things here. Manifest file, layout, activity today, click on today. Yeah, I'm gonna do the refactor. Okay, so we have planner activity, planner fragment, and I believe we have this activity today XML file, which will also need to be refactored. Uh, so let's have a look at, where is that? There it is, activity today. We're gonna change that as well. 
refactor, rename, activity planner. There we go. And yep, it's magically changed everything. Let's just run the app to make sure that uh, we still we're still working. Seems okay, right? Yeah. Let's do uh, something that we'll do sleep at 1.30 with no goal. Everything seems to be working nicely. Okay, so let's go to that. And move on to the meat and potatoes, which is of course, view pager. Layout manager that allows the user to flip left and right through pages of data. You supply an implementation of pager adapter to generate the pages that the view shows. View pager is most often used in conjunction with fragment, which we prepared yesterday, which is a convenient way to supply and manage the life cycle of each page. There are standard adapters implemented for using fragments with view pager, which cover the most common use cases. These are fragment pager adapter and fragment state page, fragment state pager adapter. Each of these classes have a simple code showing how to build a full user interface with them. So I've kind of looked at this briefly off stream and fragment pager adapter keeps all the pages uh, or all the views for the pages in memory at the same time. So that's not really, uh, that wouldn't be good for us because we have an infinite number of, uh, of pages in either direction because it is of course a date, um, it's essentially a calendar and uh, we can go infinitely far into the future and um, fairly far back if we really wanted to, we could go right back to uh, 1970, uh, which is where the first Unix timestamp, I think, is. Uh, and I'm not sure what would happen if we went any further back than that. We'd probably get some kind of integer wrapping problem. Um, views which are annotated with view pager dot decor view annotation are treated as part of the view pages decor. Each decor views position can be controlled via layout gravity. Okay, so I think that's to do with when you see these tab layouts, and you can either swipe through the tabs or you can uh, click the the tab itself. We're not going to be doing that. Summary. Uh, class, layout params. Have I clicked something that I didn't mean to? No, I haven't. Uh, on change listener, on change listener, page transformer, saved state. Scroll state dragging indicates that the page is being dragged by the user's idle and settling settling to a final position uh, inherited constants view group and view inherited fields view public constructors so we can create a view pager with a context or a context with an attribute set and then we have a bunch of methods but what we don't have is an example. Do we have an example? Let's go all the way to the bottom. Okay, so not in this in this documentation. Let's go all the way to the top again. Let's get rid of this now. Um, so we're gonna do fragment state page adapter, I guess. Implementation of page adapter pager adapter that uses fragment to manage each page. This class also handles saving and restoring of a fragment state. This version of the pager is more useful when there are a large number of pages working more like a list view. When pages are not visible to the user, their entire fragment may be destroyed. That's what we want. Only keeping the safe state of that fragment. This allows the pager to hold onto much less memory associated with each visited page compared to the fragment pager adapter at the cost of potentially more overhead when switching pages. When using fragment pager adapter, the host pager must have a valid ID set. Subclasses only need to implement get item and get count to have a working adapter. Here's an example of a pager containing a fragment of lists. So fragment page, fragment state pager support, extends activity. Num items, we have an adapter, we have a pager. On create, uh, we do the normal stuff. 
layout fragment pager. Uh, we have an adapter, which is the fragment manager, which we have, I think, in our planner activity. Where are you? There we go, we have a fragment manager. Hmm. M adapter is my adapter. Okay, that's, yeah, that's a custom thing. And we pass that the fragment manager. Uh, and then we have, what is this? Pager, view pager, find by ID, r.id.pager. So that must be a widget then. So let's open our uh, activity planner and look for pager, view pager. Bang that in here. Uh, and then we'll do match, match constraint. Okay, so I'm just going to constrain this on all corners. And that might be difficult because I can't get to to this one. Can I switch to blueprint view? Can I do it? Yeah, let's put that there. So, yeah, I should be able to have a 16 pixel. Or do I just want zero? I think I'll probably go zero because we've already got padding on the... Uh, match constraint. We already have padding on the child. It doesn't like that, does it? No, it doesn't. There we go. No, nope. doesn't like it at all. I just want it central, please. Central. Okay, I'm not really sure what to do about that. Here we are. Margin end, margin right. No. No. Vertical bias, top of parent, 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 parent. Okay, that's fine. Uh, planner activity, yeah. So we have a pager, we should probably give it an ID. Android ID, is it? Equals at ID forward slash planner page view. Has that worked? Yeah, it, indeed it has. Uh, okay. So where are we? Where are we? There we are. Uh, so this is this fragment stuff here. We're not going to be creating the fragment in here anymore. So I'm just going to comment this out for now. Uh, and also this. This is now legacy. And we're gonna do it all in here. So we're gonna do uh, view pager stuff. And let's just have a look again at this tutorial. We've got, we need a adapter, um, which we haven't got yet. So, build adapter to do uh, we have we can get the pager we can do that down here so let's do uh, m private view pager pager and then down here we can do pager equals uh, find view by ID and then r.id dot planner page view. And that gives us that. And what's next? We have to set the adapter. So pager dot set adapter. And I'm going to comment this out for now because we haven't built it yet to do. Uh, watch for button clicks, don't really care about that to be honest. Uh, yeah, don't care about that at all. So it looks like that's all we have to do in the in the activity. We need a new Android class, new Java class should I say. And this is going to be our pager adapter, so we'll do uh, Java class. Uh, we'll call it planner page adapter. Or pager adapter might be better. Uh, class sub 
class, this is going to uh, fragment state pager adapter, and it's not going to implement anything other than that. So let's try that. There we go. Uh, what do we need in here? We need a public constructor which takes a n constructor. This takes a fragment manager, and then we need a over two override functions, and they are get count and. All I'm doing here, by the way, guys, is pressing Command and N, and it's giving me options uh, of magical functions to get item to bring in. Okay, so is that it? That's all we need to do, really? Hmm. So this get count, I'm not really sure what this needs to be because the number of pages is as large as a 64-bit integer, which is a lot of days, or a lot of seconds should I say. So we may have to put some kind of limit on that. I'm not sure. Don't know. Don't know what to do with that just yet. Uh, get item. This return array list fragment new instance position. So what is this? This uh, this class here that extends list fragment. Can we just return our planner fragment? Maybe. Maybe we can. Because it looks from this like th these are all the same methods that we. Apart from this on, on activity created, these are all very similar to what we did yesterday. So maybe we can do, uh, what did we do in the planner activity? We did new planner fragment and then we passed it in a timestamp. So return new planner fragment. Maybe. And of course, this requires uh, this requires a context, doesn't it? So that requires a fragment. And we passed it a planner fragment, which should extend fragment. So that's, yes, it does. So that's bizarre. What's the constructor look like? Empty constructor. Uh, maybe we need to do new instance. Yeah, new instance. And pass in the timestamp. So I'll do a planner fragment dot new instance, or is it dot new instance? There we go. And then pass in the timestamp, uh, which is, you know what, let's just do, let's just do today's timestamp for now, just to see if we can get it working. Epoch converter, hour, minute, seconds. 
and pop timestamp. Okay, what's the problem here? Cannot resolve symbol new instance. Why? Public static new instance. Did I misspell something? Hmm. Ah, that's why. Incompatible types. This returns. It shouldn't be that way because this this fragment. So we've got an empty constructor. We should have an empty constructor. New instance returns a planner fragment. Which extends fragment. So this is really weird. And this returns a fragment. Maybe we return a planner fragment instead. Clashes. Hmm. Hmm. Parset 07, I like the fact that you have a separate PC for gaming or other stuff. Indeed, I have quite a few. <laughs> That's my gaming machine, and it runs Windows. Shock horror. I have uh, a couple of Linux machines in this room as well, and I have my MacBook. There's plenty of things to program on. Really confused about this now. Um... Hmm. Public fragment get item return incompatible types found. Maybe I cast this as a fragment. Can't do that. Can't see any reason why this wouldn't work. Yeah, I strongly feel like that should work, so I am deeply confused. Uh, but let's create our adapter anyway. We'll do um, on a pager adapter. Uh, adapter equals new planner pager adapter. Doesn't like this at all, does it? Where, where are you? I didn't misspell it. <laughs> Let's go back up here and check things over. Uh, adapter, my adapter, and then we pass that a fragment manager, right? A fragment manager. Uh, which I guess is go fragment manager. Get rid of that line now. Why isn't this class being picked up? Why can't we resolve that symbol? 
is right there. So we have a problem here. This constructor never gets called. This is the problem. Let's have a look, see if there's any more tutorials. Fragments, state, pager adapter, tutorial. Uh, what does new instance return? What type? Let's have a look. Planner fragments. New instance returns a planner fragment which is here and extends fragment. So there shouldn't be any issues. And it says that this is not getting called either. To create a new instance of this fragment using the provided parameters, we have that. Return a new instance of planner fragment. Required fragment. really uh, really confused by this so we must have fragment in here yeah we do android app dot app dot fragment and we are returning it aren't we yeah returning fragment which is new planner fragment hmm Android development is full of surprises. You can never predict what's coming your way. This is true. Although there are two ways to implement Android View Pager class, but in this tutorial, I'm only going to discuss Fragment State Pager Adapter. Since the main purpose advantage of Android Blah is to consume less memory as compared to its counterpart. Because it destroys fragments sooner than not really. Yes, okay, so adapter example. To get started, first thing you need to do is create a layout for view pager and Android fragment state pager adapter class. Now while creating a layout, please keep in mind to use Android support v4 view.view pager, as we would like our app to be compatible with older versions of Android. Well I don't really give a crap about that. We're in uh, we're in alpha here. The layout above is main layout. What have I got? What have I got? Button and linear layout. View pager. Okay. Uh, now what's this? This is the main activity. We have an adapter and a pager and on create. Uh, we do this, this, we create an adapter, get fragment manager. We create a pager. We set the adapter of the pager to our adapter, which we can't do at the minute because we can't resolve this symbol for some bizarre reason. I find that really strange. Right, so do we still need to implement this? Right, I, I don't feel like we need this anymore. Um, and I don't feel like we need this anymore either. And I'm not sure whether that's gonna help or hurt us. Doesn't feel like it. Planner. Pager adapter. Did I create this? Oh, guys, look at this. Look at this idiot here. This should be inside here. So that's what happens when you don't look at where you're right clicking. Planner pager adapter adapter equals new planner, and then we can pass it the fragment manager, which it doesn't like. 
cannot be applied to cannot be applied to fragment manager as it gets support fragment manager okay weird don't really understand the difference between those two um, I'm guessing one of them comes from a different library or something uh, so we got the page view and then we set the adapter to that that's fine and what should we do about this then because I feel like this should work hmm why do we no longer need this so is it the case that we are using some kind of incorrect fragment up here yeah, we are. We are using android.app.fragment where we should be using this one. I'm not really sure. Oh God, what did I do? Find a fragment. There we are. So we got the fragment from the support library now and hopefully we haven't broken anything and if we look in our yep that's working now so I'm kind of nervous about this birds why didn't what's wrong with this unused import statement I guess because we are not uh, on a pager adapter well, we are using that now, so there, look, because new on a pager adapter. Uh, so that is getting called. OK, I'm going to run it and see what happens. And uh, at least if we get an error, then we'll be closer to not having an error, right? And we get sweet nothing. Sweet nothing. And that might be because we've got get count zero. Let's try and get count one. Okay, we have an error. Uh, so focus app planner activity must implement on fragment interaction listener. So removing that was a bad idea then, I guess. How far back do I need to go? Fragment interaction listener, yeah, okay. And what else? We, this was fine, but we needed to replace this with the uh, get support manager. Let's try that. Oh, er, my gird. Wednesday, eighteenth. So something's something's not quite right with this. But it's not bad. We are managing to show it. So what happens then? First of all, why isn't it recognizing that it's today? I'm actually going to keep that for now. Uh, we can get rid of this to do because we build the adapter. <laughs> uh, so we're passing in a timestamp. We're passing in the timestamp of today. Was that a UTC timestamp? It was. So we should be seeing today, not the date, which means that this piece of code here let's have a look at uh, me only. Well, we got now in render current timestamp equals this. That look familiar to us? 
9600, 9600, yeah. Uh, so this didn't, this didn't fire. Where do we print that out? We print that out there. And uh, okay, we don't need this anymore. So we'll get rid of that. Y, Y. And then when we get to here, we will do top of day and that will be current day TS. We'll see where we went wrong with that. Uh, new. Ah, so there's a slight difference here between what we've calculated as the top of the day and the current timestamp. Why is that? So we get the default time zone. Oh, because we're not in UTC, are we? We wanted this one, our local time. Yeah, which is 6,000, yeah. So if I pass through here, do this. Yeah, comes up as today. So that's good. We have a pager. And I'm guessing if I do this, then we'll be able to at least page between two identical pages, right? Ooh, swipey swipey guys. This makes me really happy. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy this actually makes me feel. This is pretty cool. So, the thing that changes between these two things here is that the position, can it be a negative? Because we're moving forward. Uh, so we can't go back to yesterday and that is a problem. That is a problem. So we want to be able to move at least back in time, I think. Yeah, I do. I want to be able to go back in time. by at least 30 days. So can I, can I set the start of this to today? And then every time we do position, it will be distance from that start date, right? See, there's a problem because I can't set, I could say like, Okay, I want a 200 day span. And then today is like halfway in between that and then set the position to today and be able to go quite far back in either direction. But like, what's the maximum we'd want to go back in time? 30 days maybe? So if we set this to 60, and then in the activity, can I tell it that I want to start it at uh, pager dot set position maybe, or set current item. Uh, so let's say at thirty. And then if. And then maybe I can move backwards. No, nope, still starting at one. Do I need to do this after the fact? Yeah, how do I? How do I do that? Maybe it's not set current item. Maybe it's like uh, pager dots. What have we got? We've got ads. We've got compute. We've got discratch. Dis discratch. Dispatch. Uh, fake draw. Draw. Fake drag. Generate layouts. These are all gets. That's not what we want. These are all events. 
remove, remove uh, off screen page limit, set page margin, page transformer, add, 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 add. It's not going to be any of those things. Bring to front, call and click, can resolve, uh, check, clear animation. Hmm. hmm. Dispatch, dispatch, dispatch. Equals find, 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 force. Force layout, no. Get alpha, get animation. These are all gets again. Not gonna be any of those. Wow, a hell of a lot of these, right? What about the sets? Where are the sets? Set. Set current item. Set adapter. Set off screen page limit. Set page margin. Set alpha. Set animation. Set. In Is there a set initial or initial? No. <sighs> Maybe it's the, the on the adapter. Get item. Set primary item. Could that be it? So let's have a look at, uh, it's gonna be What are we using here? We're using Hello Bobo FR one hundred, welcome to the stream. Oh Fragment State Pager Adapter. Initial starting Call to inform the adapter of which item is currently considered to be the primary. That is the one to show the user as the current page. So it is this one. This method will not be invoked when the adapter contains no items. The containing view from which the page will be removed. The position that is now the primary, the same object that was returned by instantiate item. Hmm. First position. Set adapter, set current item, current position. I'm sure we tried that. I'm sure we tried this. Maybe it has to be done here. Hmm. Oh, I can go backwards. That worked very good. Okay, so now really we're in this we're in this area where we have a slice of time and it's a 60 day slice of time. So that's 30 days into the past, 30 days into the future. And we want to start in the middle. Now there is no middle because it's 60 days and not 61 days. Um, so if we say that the starting timestamp We have to do a little bit of math, aren't we? So if we're saying that we are starting 29 days away from, so essentially position 29 in the list is today, then 
we our timestamp has to be minus the number of seconds in 29 days, doesn't it? In order for the first page we see to be today. Uh, so where's our adapter? So here we are. It's going to be. Um, so if we get a integer current timestamp, and here's here it is again, guys. I'm definitely going to write a utility function to do this today. Equals. Uh, that's going to be system dots current time in millis divided by a thousand and that's long because that is a large number and it won't fit in a signed integer and I'm gonna to have to cast that as an integer like that uh, and then we need the top of the day so we need the time zone tz equals time zone de default and then we need the offset so that's uh, is that int? it's long offset equals tz I'll get offset uh, divided by 1000 long I can just do the same thing with that really actually do it int because when we divide those millisecond timestamps by a thousand, we get something that can fit inside an integer, a signed integer. So now we have a, a, a an offset from, what's wrong here? Okay, we need to do this first. Okay, and then we'll do, um, we need to figure, we need to get the timestamp of the day, don't we? So. We'll get the UTC midnight, UTC midnight equals current timestamp uh, minus equals current time zone, current timestamp modulo 86,400, which of course is the number of seconds in a day. Uh, and then from that UTC midnight, we can get, we can do this. And then we can do in top of day equals UTC midnight minus. Um, we've done this so many times on the stream. <laughs> yeah, parset 07. That's uh, as soon as we've done this like in three different places. Now I'm definitely going to write a function to do this before the end of the episode, hopefully. Although we are running out of time. Uh, where are uh, Write a utility function to get the top of the day in current TZ. Uh, UTC midnight minus offset. Okay, so that is today. That is the top of the current day. And our position, if we want to pass through, if our current position is 29, then it would be, oh God, this is where my really crappy maths shows through. If it was position one, then it would be top of day. If it was position zero, it'd be top of day minus 29, wouldn't it? 29 times 24 times 60 times 60. So yeah, I'm really terrible at maths and doing it on stream with an audience is quite daunting. So if we want, let me, let's write this out, DFB. If the starting point zero is 29 days in the past, then we 
then the then position zero would be the current timestamp minus twenty nine and position one would be current minus twenty eight EC ETC um, and also guys I'm kind of happy that you're seeing how bad I am at math because it proves that you don't have to be a great mathematician to write programs you just have to be able to figure stuff out so position one would be there and position 20 29 would be minus zero right which means that position 30 would be minus minus one, which is of course is plus one. So that's that's right. So what we need to pass through is, yeah, so it's actually quite simple. All we need to do, I think, is if the default position is 29, and we'll create a constant for that in a minute, to do create constant for starting point, uh, then we'll do top of day minus yeah minus position times. And then the number of seconds in the day, which is 80, 86,400. So that's the timestamp minus. I really hope that's right. Let's try it and see what happens. Okay, so that starts on the 19th of March. So that didn't work, but that's good because that's my birthday. So, okay. So where did I go wrong? If it's position zero, then it's minus nothing because zero minus zero times that is zero. But we start at position 29. So what we need is today. We need to minus nothing from today when we're at 29. God, I am crap at this stuff. Um, it's probably really obvious. I'm going to watch the stream back later and think, God, you're such an idiot, Carl. Hang on. Start at position 29. So if we're at zero, then we need to minus 29. Right, so the problem isn't this. It's yeah, we're doing this wrong. So we're starting at twenty nine, and I want to get today's timestamp. So if I'm at twenty nine. I just want top of day. I want something. I want zero times something when we're at 29. All right. Taking away from top of day. I am so embarrassed right now at how this just isn't coming to me at all. Position 30 would be minus minus one. So 
Echo, stop. So what, what, we've, what have we got in this equation? This is, I really should have paid more attention in math at school. Uh, but I have managed to get by without it thus far. I never, never, didn't foresee this coming that I'd be live on stream trying to figure out a very basic math problem and struggling very much. And I don't know whether it's the lights uh, making me hot or what. Let's have a think. So what we need to pass through is a timestamp. And that timestamp is either is going to be a number of seconds in the past. So if we were at position zero, then it would be the timestamp of now minus 29 times 29 days, right? So that's zero times 29 days. Ah, ah, of course, of course. So the starting point is the top of day, top of day minus equals top of day minus 29 times 86,400, right? So that gives us the start point. And then everything from that start point, we do start point plus position times Eighty-six thousand four hundred. Please tell me that I have not screwed up again there, and that we will start at today, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> okay, we got there in the end. We got there in the end, and I'm sure there's a much better way of doing this math, uh, but that works for me for now. That's that. That's a very simple way to think about it, and we got there, didn't we? Yeah. And math wise that's probably absolutely terrible but uh, there we go do I use this why don't I use this current timestamp is assigned but never used it's right there okay this seems to work for now so look at this guys we have reached the destination we now can jump between days by swiping how cool is that Okay, so Friday, tomorrow, so and if can so now I should be able to forward plan tomorrow. Is that the case? I want to wake up at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Wake up. No goal. Tomorrow. There it is, wake up. So we do have something where after we create a goal, we don't jump back to the page that we were on. Uh, which is okay for now. We'll make a note of it. Uh, we don't return to the page that we created a slot for. That's a bug. Uh, this, swipe to select day, I'm happy to say we are now using a view pager for and it's quite, it's quite good, isn't it? Quite happy with that. Uh, so yeah, the last thing that I'm going to do, and we are running out of time guys, so if you've got any questions about the contents of today's stream, please bang them in the chat now so that I can answer them for you. Uh, I am going to create this constant that I said I was going to. Uh, so we'll call that, uh, we'll call it, how do I create constants? Completely forgot. And I know I've got one in my fragment here, yeah. And it looks like, okay, we just use the final keyword. So it's public static final string, and then everything in caps. And that's in here, isn't it? So public static final string. That's a mouthful. Um, what was I gonna use this for? Ah, it's not, it's integer. 
guess it's just int. Yep. Uh, so uh, we'll call it time span, day span equals 60. Okay, and then we can do day span. And then we get our start position. Is 29. Or shall we go 30? You know, let's go 30 and then we can make sure it still works after. Uh, so what's the problem? You get rid of that to do. You can get rid of this and we can that 29 there needs to become start pos put this in brackets so that it's easier to read uh, we have that start point position seconds in a day okay uh, what did I want to do? Get rid of that. And then in our planner activity, this 29 becomes planner activity. No, it doesn't. It becomes planner page adapter dot start pos. Does that work? Do we still land on today? We do. Very cool. Okay. So I can get rid of this legacy code. Uh, we can get rid of this click previous and click next because that way of doing things is way out. We're all appified now. And what else? What else was I going to do? I was going to create a utility uh, to do this current timestamp business because we do it all over the place. We do it here. Um, so I'm probably, I'm just gonna write, uh, we'll add a new class to here, Java class, and it will just be a library. So we'll just call it uh, focus lib. Okay, and everything in here is gonna be static. Don't like these comments, I think they're a waste of time. Uh, so I'm going to do a public static function. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to do a public static int called top of day um, local. Yeah. And then that is going to return an integer. Is that okay? Yeah, I think so. And this is going to do our it's going to do all of this. P. So we need that class. Uh, so we have time zone. We have the number of offset seconds. That gives us, that's not going to work. Or it might do, but it's not great. It doesn't give us the seconds, does it? It gives us milliseconds. Let me just check that, TZ. Uh, Java time zone get offset. Where is the official documentation? Get offset integer. With the time zone offset for current date modified, it doesn't say. It turns the offset specified date if daily it's a blah 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 method returns is it in milliseconds or what? The amount of time in milliseconds, All right? So it should be a long then, shouldn't it? Well, I guess not. Okay, that's fine, and it seems to work elsewhere. So we divide it by a thousand. Current day TS equals this. Uh, so that gives us the timestamp now. That then gives us the top of the day in UTC, and then we minus the offset. So I think we can just return current day TS there. Uh, 
Uh, so this gives us now top of day local. Yes, it does. So where are we using this? We're using it here. So if we want top of day, start point, where's start point? Okay, right. So we don't need any of that stuff anymore. We can just do focus lib dot top of day local and we'll make that uh, top of day equals int and that makes things a lot easier uh, yeah that looks fine and then where else are we doing this we're doing it in here in current day ts equals focus lib dot top of day local Uh, I think we may need the time zone somewhere, so we need to be careful where we're ripping this apart. That seems to be okay, and I think we're doing it in in here as well. Yeah, uh, but we do need to we do, we do need the time zone there, not the offset, but the time zone definitely. So, uh, what do we have? Top of day equals int top of day focus lib. Don't get top of day local. Is that current ATS? Where's current ATS coming from? Top of day is timestamp, so yeah. Okay, so it's current ATS. That should be maybe top of, no, that's top of working day, right? So this is current ATS, yeah. End of day, top of day, working TS. Yeah, okay, they're fine. Uh, we still keep the times on there, so everything should work with that. Hopefully. Yeah, everything still seems to be working. The only thing left is, yeah, that works fine as well. I don't think that's in, is it in the task activity? Uh, we have some, we have some date formatting going on but we don't need the top, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Great, so it doesn't look like there's any questions in the chat, guys, so I'm just gonna go over to our to-do list now and have a look if there's done that. Okay, this is good, this is very good. So what's here? Start reminder prefill task, great. Really happy with that, we managed to do that in an hour, just over an hour. Uh, so as always, we'll check everything into version control. End of episode 19. Uh, what did we do? We created a view pager and fully implemented swipe navigation between days in our planner commits very very happy with that progress so uh, if you join the stream late or missed any of it guys the uh, the whole episode will be uploaded to YouTube uh, and it's the coding with Carl channel he says there we are this one so just do a search for Coding with Carl and you'll find my YouTube channel and all of the episodes of this show will be in the Zero to Android playlist. This episode should be uploaded hopefully in the next three or four hours. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, send me a like, you know, all that stuff. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow again. Yes, I will. I'll see you tomorrow again at the same time, which is 19.30 UK time or 7.30 p.m. Thanks a lot for joining me today. Uh, thank you a lot for joining me today, guys. I've enjoyed it as ever. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.